Welcome to Meme Analysis for Hedgehogs. So before we start, this part is uh, part of a series I did with Malware Blocker, and the previous video of that series is on his YouTube channel, which I will be linking in the description below. And um, yeah, his YouTube channel is about antivirus tools, uh, security related tool reviews, tests, malware analysis and security news. So if you want to find his, um, the previous video to this one, visit his channel and there you find it, uh, Trojan Spy Analysis with Carsten. So, um, also if you want any updates on his videos, um, check out his Twitter. So that's it. So this is the third part of our analysis for this Trojan Spy. And we will take a look at the obfuscation and how to deobfuscate this. Now, um, we already unpacked this, we analyzed it by monitoring it, and um, we observed that there are some strings in there that don't make much sense, that seem kind of encoded. So let's take a look at this with uh, strings easy by sys internals and I say minus n6 for a minimum of six characters that we want to extract from that. And then we extract that from the dump and we put that into strings txt. So we can open that up in notepad now and take a look at the strings. All right. So one of those strings looked awfully familiar to me which is uh, why I took this as a basis. It really looks like a run key. And um, let's see what we can do with that. Uh, it seems that the obfuscation only affects the letters and the, the alphanumeric um, letters, characters. So the uh, special characters are not translated or substituted. And that's why this still has this typical structure of a registry key. Now, the typical run key is software uh, Microsoft Windows current version run. And that's like, all right, does this fit? Now, we have, we can now compare um, if one, if this is a um, monoalphabetic or a polyalphabetic substitution that's been used here, and it seems that this is monoalphabetic. What does it mean? It means one character is always translated to uh, the same character. So we see that R is always translated to the number two. And uh, not in this case, because I guess because it should be uppercase like that. Uh, does that fit? Do we have a big R here? Yes, we have. So um, uppercase R translated to lowercase v and smaller case R translated to two. So this seems to fit. That means it's pretty easy to um, make a script to uh, deobfuscate this. The only thing we have to find out is uh, basically the translation alphabet. So we can write an, a script that does this for us. Okay, we can search for this string in the binary and see where the decryption or decoding um, function is in the binary. So let's do this. We use x64 dbg or 32 dbg in this case and uh, load this up here and then if you right click on the cpu window you can go to search for current module string references take a look where the string is it's here and double click on that and there you can see where the string is being referenced now, if you look uh, right below, there's a call to another function and the same function is being called right below this other obfuscated string. Now we know this binary has to deobfuscate a string to use it properly. Un un otherwise it couldn't um, 
apply the run key to the registry, right? So what I expect this to do right uh, before it's using the key or right right after it's referencing the key um, is a de decryption function. So I would already assume that because this function is being used on several, um, right below several of these strings, that this could be the decryption function for the, or de yeah, deobfuscation function for these. Okay, so let's press enter and we land in here. And there's already a reference to another string that looks like this could be our alphabet. Now I am tried a little bit, well, I tried to use that as the alphabet, it, it doesn't really fit. I guess it's uh, doing some some other operations on that too, so uh, that it's not the, the alphabet that we are looking for. So, okay, um, let's make a breakpoint right here. And here is the return value. That's where the strings should be deobfuscated. Let's make a breakpoint uh, there too. And now we could try to run this. Okay, now we see this has been terminated, so it didn't work. Uh, if we look at the processes, skype.exe is running. So this did not work, but it copied itself and it um, executed skype.exe, which is where we want to go. Uh, we observed in the last part of the series where this is going to be safe to. You could also check the location here in the properties. Uh, before you kill the skype.exe. But yeah, we know it's in um, app data something. Let's take a look here. App data install skype.exe. And so let's debug this instead. That's the same, uh, the same binary as the dump. Okay. We are here. Okay, we do the same. We search for current module string references. We go to this string reference. We press enter on the call right below. And now we are at the right location to put our breakpoints on. And let's try this again and run it. Now we are here. All right. And if we run again, we see that there is a string, this one, and that has been translated to when HTTP open. So um, you see an EAX is the uh, return value. And in this case, the return value of the deobfuscation function or the decoding function is the address to the um, deobfuscated string. So when HTTP open is in this case, has been translated from that, right? So let's try this again. And we see we have another string that's been put into this function to be deobfuscated. Press this again, and we get the translation win HTTP get proxy for URL. Now let's um, repeat this until we get to our run key because it's uh, quite a long string. We could use that. So this looks like our run key right here see this and uh, we should use that we should follow this in dump okay now what I want to do let me explain that I want to get an alphabet a b c d e f g h i j k l Y, Z, and this one. Um, furthermore, if you look at this string reference right here, this is uh, seems to be kind of the alphabet, like, but it's doing operations on that, some other operations on that. Um, can we show this? Go to 
this that's the one and you can see uh, which characters are being translated so it's not only the alphanumeric ones but it's also um, the uh, um, for instance the dash and the percentage sign so we add these to our alphabet that we want to translate so it's that that and that one so that seems to be uh, that seem to be all of the characters that we need. I guess so. Yeah, looks good. And um, now we can force the uh, binary to translate this alphabet by by editing the. Well, let's see. We copy this alphabet that we want it to translate and we now we patch this to translate it for us okay we can mark this no not that one uh where is it the string this one we want to get that one follow the word and dump so that would have been the run key this yes and we right click and we say binary edit and now we copy our alphabet in there okay and wait i think we should add something more binary edit uh, i will add three times the space so i know where the alphabet is finished yeah that's all right. The string is slightly longer than the run key, but that doesn't matter. So let's um, try that. We press F9 again or run. So we get to the end of this. And the return value should now be our translation alphabet. Here it is. So we follow that and dump. And there it is. That's the translation alphabet. So basically we force the binary to, to um, uh, give us the uh, alphabet that we are looking for. Okay, let's just copy this. And uh, here it is. Greatness. And now we can use that to write us a script that will decode all of the strings. We can now um, turn this off. Okay, turn this off. And we will write a um, Python script. So if you don't have Python installed, this is Python 2.7 that I've been using. So uh, use that. And uh, we say now, Okay, let's save this as a Python script first. Uh, decrypt Trojan Py. It's not a txt file. Save that. Now we also get the right highlighting for this. And um, can I make this bigger? All right, now I found a way to make this a bit bigger so you can see it. And um, what we will be doing is we write a decoding function. So we say decode string, and that's our string. And we have two arrays, or in this case strings, which are alpha from. So that's the alphabet we are uh, translating from. And the other one is the alphabet we are translating to alpha to. So and then we um, will read the string, the, uh, translate each character of the string. So we say for character in string, we want to get a result. So the result starts with an empty string. That's what we will be returning in the end, return result. Okay. So um in this case we will say if the character is part of the alphabet so if in alpha from uh we want this 
translate we would get the alpha 2 um, and that should have the same index where the character is in alpha from so that means if we uh, let's say if we want to translate the word hello um, we look for the index of h and we search at the same index in the alpha from which would be big f so we say alpha from index of the character should be uh, also uh, and we grab the alpha 2 value for the same index where we find that uh, character in alpha from right um, if it's not part of that alphabet we will simply append it without translating it and that should be it for the decoding function and now um, with open our file well, let's put in here the file later as f so we want to open the strings and uh, we want to translate all of them using this substitution so i put this in here i'm not sure if i have to escape this well let's see and um we say f read lines right this should get us all of the lines and for each line for line in lines we uh, do this translation part so we can simply print the line i guess print the decoded decode string line uh, yeah that should work let's try that let's see if this works uh, command prompt to the desktop and we say decrypt trojan pie and that's it right it prints something so we put that into the decoded strings txt that works uh, we take a look at this and see if we of course it will also decode all of the strings that have are not obfuscated so these are now basically obfuscated but all of the strings that were previously obfuscated are now readable and we can see here's the run key uh, and here's another registry key and uh, here are parts of the um, logging key logging mechanism so these uh, will be put into the log so that the attacker knows which keys have been pressed so these are the special keys they often do these in these square brackets um yeah and everything that's now plain text has been obfuscated before so we get quite some information right here from the deobfuscation that's it for today Thanks for watching and please don't forget to uh, look by at Mavic Blockers channel. Uh, if you have any questions, put them below. You can also um, find the sample and the tools downloads in the description below. So have a nice day.